Hello and welcome to this video where today we're going to be having a look at how we classify particles. Now for a long time scientists have been trying to find out what the very smallest part of matter could possibly be. Um, we started off by thinking that the smallest part of matter could be an atom and we considered it just to be basically a solid sphere. We then discovered that there were, very st that there were smaller particles than atoms called electrons and we came up with the idea that an atom would probably be made of something like a, lo a lot of positive charge with electrons inside it and you'll probably recognize this as the plum pudding model of the atom and then Ernest Rutherford came along and did, he did an experiment and he modified our, our ideas of an atom and came up with the idea that an atom had a central nucleus with electrons going around the outside in the 1920s an extra particle was then discovered called the neutron and again our model of the atom was modified so that we thought that the nucleus of the atom now consists of protons and neutrons with the electrons going around the outside but scientists st were still not satisfied they still wanted to know if these electrons and protons and neutrons were still fundamental in other words it, were, were they particles that were not made of anything smaller so what they did is back in the 1960s they took some protons and some neutrons and they fired really high speed high energy electrons at them and what they found is that when they fired them in lot some of them were deflected at really big angles so almost bounced back now if pro if protons and neutrons were just solid spheres in other words they weren't made of anything else then most of these electrons should just bounce off like this and be deflected at small angles but because they bounced off like this it meant that they had some sort of internal structure in other words they were made of something else so by doing lots of different experiments scientists came up with the idea that protons and neutrons are made of something called quarks now there are six six types or six flavors of quark but for our a-level studies we only actually need to know three we need to know this one over here so this one here this is known as the down quark and it's just given the symbol d okay in relative charges so in charges relative to the proton it's got a charge of minus a third this quark is an up quark and has a charge of plus two thirds relative to that of a proton and then there's this thing this thing is called a strange quark so we have three different types of quarks down up and strange with charges minus a third plus two thirds and minus a third relative to the proton we also give them something else as well as the charges we put some different numbers on them all quarks have something called a baryon number and they've all got a baryon number of plus one third and the strange quarks got something extra the strange there's a, because there's an extra number we put on quarks called the strangeness now the down quark and the up quark are not strange quarks so they have a strangeness of zero the strange quark is a strange quark so therefore has a strangeness of minus one all of this data is given on your data sheet in the exam now these quarks are never ever seen on their own you, you never ever see just a down quark or just an up quark so they, they always come combined with other quarks so this is one way that quarks for example can combine we've got two up quarks and one down quark now because we've got two up quarks it means that if we think about the charge so let's think about the charge of this particle that we've made so the charge of this thing is there's a charge of plus two thirds from this and a charge of plus two thirds from that so we have a charge of plus two thirds plus another two thirds and then we've got the charge of this as well now the down quark's got a charge of minus a third so we take of so we minus a third from that and if we simply add this up we end up with a charge of plus one so the charge of this particle that's made up of these three different types of quarks is a, is a particle that's got a charge of plus one and if we think about the baryon number the baryon number of this thing well an up quark's got a char uh, baryon number of plus a third and so is that one and so is this down quark so this has got a baryon number also of plus one so because this has got a baryon number of plus one we say this is a baryon okay and it's a baryon which has got a charge of plus one in actual fact this thing is a particle that we know really well this is the proton so the the proton is a baryon which has a charge of plus one and there's a couple of definitions that we need if we have some particles that are made of quarks 
made up of these quarks, then we say they're hadrons. Now we can combine quarks in a few different ways. So hadrons are just a generic name for particles that are made of quarks. Um, a classification of hadrons is a baryon. Now baryons are particles that are made of three quarks. Now you can see this one's got three quarks in it. So the proton is a baryon because it's made of three quarks and it has a charge of plus one. There's a, over here we've got another particle. Now it looks exactly the same as this except for this up quark has been swapped with a down quark. So if we have a look at this, let's have a look at this from a charge point of view. The charge of, we have a charge of plus two thirds from the up quark and then we've got a charge of minus a third from this down quark and a charge of minus a third from that down quark. Minus a third, minus a third. So if we add those up, we get a charge of zero. So what, and again, if we look at the baryon number, we've got a baryon number of a third and a third and a third. So again, the baryon number of this is plus one. So it's a baryon and we know we can see it's a baryon because it's made up of three different quarks, but it's now a baryon that's got a charge of zero instead of plus one as it is over here. So this thing we've met before because this is our neutron. So if we sum this up in this way, this is a proton. It has a charge of plus one, it has a baryon number of plus one, and it's made up of an up, up, down quark. A neutron, as we know, has got a charge of zero, it's also got a baryon number of plus one because it's made up of three quarks and the quark composition is up, down, down. So we would say that the proton quark composition is up, up, down and the neutron is up, down, down. Now you have to know the quark, the quark compositions of both the proton and the neutron for your exam. So you must learn these two things. Like I say, this is given on your data sheet, but you must learn that a proton is made of an up, up, down quark and the neutron is made of an up, down, down quark. Now, as we saw before, every particle has got a corresponding antiparticle and that's exactly the same for quarks. So where we had a down, up and strange quark, we also get an anti-down, an anti-up and an anti-strange quark. The symbols are exactly the same, D, U and S, but this time they've got a bar over them and everything is opposite. The mass is, obviously the mass is the same, the mass of a down quark and an anti-down quark is exactly the same, but we swap everything else, pluses for minus. So the charge on the down quark, as we saw before, was minus a third. So the charge on an anti-down quark is plus a third, exactly the opposite. The baryon number of all three of the normal quarks, the down up strange was plus a third. So for an anti-quark, the baryon number is minus a third, it's exactly the opposite. And again, the strangeness is exactly the opposite too, because for a down and an up quark and an anti-down and an anti-up quark, because they're not strange, they're not a strange quark, they have a strangeness of zero. A strange quark had a strangeness of minus one, whereas an anti-strange quark's got a strangeness of plus one. Now you might think an anti-proton you can make up of um, up and down quarks, but that's not true. An antibaryon is a is a part is a um, a baryon that is made up of exactly the antiparticles that make up a proton. In other words, so this is a proton, up, up, down. To make it an antiproton, we would have an anti-up, anti-up, anti-down quark. So, and you can check that this is right. So, anti-up has got a charge of minus two thirds. This anti-up has got a charge of minus two thirds. And this anti-down has got a charge of plus a third. And if we add those together, we end up with a charge of minus one, whereas our proton had a charge of plus one. So this and this are exactly the, uh, the particle and the antiparticle of each other. And exactly the same thing happens over here. This is the neutron that we saw before. This is an anti-neutron. The quark composition is exactly opposite. So where we've got an up quark, we have an anti-up quark, where we had two down quarks, we've got now got two anti-down quarks. We can check that, the, well, the, the charge of this was zero. We can check that the charge of this is still zero. So again, the charge is equal to, we've got one anti-up, two thirds, and we've got two anti-downs. So the charge of that anti-down is plus a third. So we have plus one third, plus one third. So the charge is still equal to zero. And again, as we saw in the previous video, if this neutron and this antineutron come together and meet, then they'll completely annihilate each other. 
In terms of baryon numbers, we saw that the proton and the neutron both had baryon numbers of plus one. As we can see from this, because we've swapped the baryon numbers from positive to negative for our antiquarks, then an antiproton, this thing, the antiproton, will have a baryon number equal to minus one, and the antineutron will have a baryon number of minus one, two. So we've got basically a proton, a neutron, an antiproton, an antineutron. This is made up of normal quarks, this is made up of normal quarks, these are made of antiquarks, and so is this. Now, there are also, there are different ways of combining quarks, as I said before. This is one way where we've got three of them. There is another way, um, and that's by just putting two quarks together. Um, and these things are called mesons. So mesons are particles that are made up of one quark and one antiquark. We don't get one, we don't get two quarks together or two antiquarks together. It's one quark and one antiquark. So these things are two different types of mesons. Okay, and again, we can do exactly the same thing we we did before. We could work out the the charge. So we've got an anti up, which is here. The charge is minus two thirds, and we've got a down. Down's got a charge of minus a third, so therefore this thing, whatever this is called, it has a charge of minus one. If we think about, about the baryon number, then the baryon number, we've got a down quark, which is a, has a baryon number of plus a third, and we've got an anti-up quark, which has a baryon number of minus a third, so the baryon number of this is zero. And if we think about it, it really should do, because the a baryon number of one tells us that it's made up of three quarks. So this isn't, therefore the baryon number shouldn't be plus one. The baryon number is zero. And, there's ex and this is basically the antiparticle of this. So we've got one type of meson. This is another type of meson. Again, you could go along and you could work out the charge and you could work out the baryon number. And you should find that the charge of this is plus one and the baryon number is still zero. So we've really seen two different types of particles made up of quarks. We've seen baryons, which are made up of three quarks. We've seen antibaryons, which are the exact opposite. They're made up of three antiquarks. And then we've seen mesons, which are a combination of just one quark and one antiquark. And we can, if we know the composition in terms of quarks of each of these things, then we can work out the baryon number and the charge for each one. Now, in the same way that you had to learn you have to learn for your exam the quark um, composition of a proton and a neutron. You're also expected to be able to learn the quark combinations for a number of different mesons. And these are these are the eight different mesons that you need to learn. So you've got the pi on plus, pi on zero, the k on plus, k on zero. They're all mesons. They're all made up of a quark and an antiquark. So for example, the pi pi plus is made up of an up anti-down quark, whereas a k on is K on plus is made of an up anti strange quark, and you can see that as we go through, all of them have a baryon number of zero, which they should do because they're not baryons, they're mesons, and all of them have a certain charge, which you can just work out by just by looking at the quark structure. Now, kaons are special because these are the only things at A level that we would really have a look at that, that have this strange quark in them, okay. And we'll see later on that these kaons will decay down to pions and we'll see um, exactly what happens to this strange quark. But basically, you just have to learn the quark structures of each of those. For an so an exam question could, for example, be um, state the quark structure of kaon plus and you just write down up anti-strange. So we've thought about particles that are made of quarks. Um, and we would lead to that through thinking about protons and neutrons in the center of our atom. Nowhere at all that we've seen so far have we seen electrons. And that's because electrons are not made of quarks. Electrons are fundamental particles themselves. In other words, electrons, as far as we know, as far as we know now, can't be broken down into anything smaller. And they're a different type of they're a different type of particle. So we've looked at quarks. Electrons are a, part, a type of particle called leptons. Now there are six leptons. There's the electron, which we know, which is the thing that that we see in our um, atoms orbiting the nucleus. There's also two other uh, leptons that are also that also have mass because we know an electron has 
a mass and in kilograms is 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms a muon so this thing here this muon and this tauon these also have mass and you can really think about these muons and this tauon as basically exactly the same as an electron apart from a muon is approximately 200 times got the mass of 200 times that of an electron whereas a tauon has got a, is much more massive it has a mass approximately three and a half thousand times that of an electron but apart from that it behaves exactly the same as an electron does so there that's three types of leptons there are another two as well there's there are things called well there are another three sorry there are also these neutrinos and the neutrinos are again split up into three so we have an electron neutrino a muon neutrino and a tau neutrino um, and we'll see later that often when you get some sort of decay that involves an electron then it's accompanied with an electron neutrino too now as we said electron muon and tau neutrino is basically exactly the same apart from a muon and a tau on are much heavier than an electron they have the same charge so an electron muon and tau on have got a charge of minus one um, they're obviously not baryons because they're not made up of quark quarks or anything like that so they would have a baryon number of zero but we do give them a different number so we give the, we say that because they're all leptons they have a lepton number of plus one neutrinos on the other hand aren't charged they have no charge whatsoever but again have a lepton number of plus one and as you would imagine because we have these six different types of particles we've also got six types of anti particles so we have an anti electron which we saw was called a positron an anti muon and an anti tau on again they've got exactly the opposite charges to what we'd expect so um, these have a charge of minus one these have got a charge of plus one um, there are corresponding anti neutrinos so we have an anti electron neutrino an anti muon neutrino and an anti tau neutrino again they have a charge of zero but because they're antiparticles instead of having a lepton number of plus one they have a lepton number of minus one now these things don't go together so you you just find these things completely on their own either electrons muons or towers they don't combine to make different types of particles so in a sense these are a little bit easier to think about so you can think about all of the particles we've met in this particular fl flow diagram so first of all we can ask this question is the particle we've got made of quarks if it is then we would call it a hadron we can then further split this down so we ask the question are you made of three quarks yes you are okay in that case you're a baryon and we saw that our baryons are basically protons and neutrons if however we're not made of three quarks then we're a meson and we saw there were a couple of different types of mesons in particular there's a pi meson and there are the k or kaon mesons as well so we've got baryons protons and neutrons which and we saw that they had a baryon number that was equal to plus one and mesons had a baryon number which were equal to zero because these are baryons as well this is it's perhaps worth saying because these are baryons they're obviously not leptons so if you're a baryon you have a lepton number which is equal to zero and if you're a meson because you're not a lepton then you also have a lepton number that's equal to zero so that's what happens if you're made of quarks if you're not made of quarks then you are a lepton you don't have any choice about that but again we could pop we could split them up in a number of different ways I've chosen to split them up by charge if they do have a charge then you're either an electron a muon or a tau on and in terms of baryon and lepton number um, then these things are not made of three quarks because they're not made of quarks at all so they have a baryon number of zero but they are leptons so they have a, a lepton number of plus one um, if they don't have a charge then you are a neutrino you'll be either an electron neutrino a muon neutrino or a tau on neutrino and again because you're not a baryon you have a baryon number of zero and because you are a lepton you have a lepton number of plus one and if you really wanted to you could do exactly the same thing for all of their antiparticles but this basically sums up how we categorize um, quarks and leptons and all the particles um, that we see around us so thank you very much for watching there's lots of information there but basically you just have to go away and and learn it um, so thank you very much for watching and i will see you again soon